Welcome to Hashtag Wednesdays Weekly, a weekly information session in collaboration with the voluntary sector and public sector partners. Today's session is Microsoft Excel for Beginners and our hosts are Ashish and Emily. Over to you guys. Thank you, Laura. Let me share my screen and then we can proceed with the session going forward. Thank you. I hope you, can, I hope you guys can see my screen now. Thank you, perfect. Um, so, I am I'm joined by my colleague who's a senior manager, Emily. Uh, to introduce myself, let's, uh, let's start with the introductions. I am a senior analyst in KPMG UK. I work as a strategy consultant and I help, I help my clients and the organization that I work with solve some of the biggest challenges that they're facing in terms of um, decarbonization, climate change, energy usage, and the uses of natural resources. So that's my sector specific um, knowledge. In terms of, I'm really, I really use a lot of Excel and a lot of functionalities of Excel in my day to day life. And that's when I started appreciating Excel. And that's when it instilled in me that's a wonderful software. And people, our people in different sectors, different industry use this software. So why, why, why should we not more disseminate more information about this software? So here we are. Um, Emily, do you want to go? Yeah. Thank you. So I'm Emily. I'm a senior manager, as you can see on, on the slide. And I absolutely love Microsoft Excel. It makes my life so much easier, um, mainly because I'm lazy, I'm, sorry, efficient. Um, and I like to do things in a way that means that I don't have to do any thinking. The less thinking I have to do, all the better. And the great thing about Microsoft Excel is it can actually do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. You don't have to think, you don't have to have your calculator out, which, you know, constantly losing calculators or the battery's dead or it's not sunny enough or anything like that. So big fan of Excel, have been for quite a long time. I actually competed when I was in, in sixth form in the Microsoft Excel UK finals, which is an epic level of sad when it comes to uh, obsession with a, with a, a software. But there we are. So I think we're going to move on and we'll, we'll get the session properly started now, you know, a little bit about us. So if we can slide on, slide on Ashish. Yep, sure. Uh, so the next slide that we have here is we just wanted to, because we, um, because we know all of us are at different kind of levels in Excel, some, some use Excel at a beginner level, some use Excel as an intermediate level, and some are so frightened about Excel that they, they, they feel they, Excel might bite them which is definitely not the case. If, if that's what you think, Excel is not going to bite you. It's a very friendly software. Obviously, it, as Emily said, it does the bulk of the heavy lifting for you. So feel free to use it. We just wanted to use this slide and use these couple of minutes to explore what do you think can be done or cannot be done in Excel. So I have listed out six uh, scenarios here and I want you to use the chat functionality in Zoom uh, to let me know if you think we can create beautiful pieces of art in Excel. We can create a Sudoku in Excel. We can play a video game in Excel. We can sort through an enormous amount of data in Excel. We can create simulations and visual reports, and we can create conditional formatting in Excel. I'll, I'll give you a couple of minutes and uh, use the chat functionality in Zoom. Uh, type in your answers. Which one of these do you think can or cannot be done in Excel? So I would say just type out which ones do you think can be done in Excel. And Emily, you might you might have to help me there because I don't have. Uh, I, I can I can see. So we've got from Thomas. No, you don't think beautiful pieces of art. Yes to Sudoku. No to video games. And yes, yes, yes. And then I think we've got conditional. Laura, I'm not sure. Conditional formatting. Oh yeah, I can see that. Create simulations and visual reports. And Christine thinks we can do two, four, five, and six. Nice, nice. All right, so, let me move on to the actual answers for these questions because I'm pretty sure some of you will be surprised because I, I, I certainly was with, some, with the first point. So here it is. A 74 year old Japanese man by the name of Tatsuo Horuchi actually, create, actually creates these amazing art pieces in Excel. He only uses Excel, nothing else. All this has been created in Excel. 
so much so that if you type his name and if you just type XR after it, you can see all of the work that he's created is posted online and has actually been fe featured in several museums as well. He is an amazing guy who has just shown us the extent and the level to which Excel can be used in a more artistic manner. I always used to think that Excel can, always, can only be used for mathematical or numerical things, but hey, I mean, I couldn't have been proven so wrong. So Brooke McPherson as well, amazing tool, Excel. I've been using it for an N number of years now. Never knew you could create Sudoku in Excel. Or you could actually use Excel to solve some of the Sudoku puzzles that have been nagging you for N number of years. Amazing, Bruce. I mean, I, those are the two things that really, when I was even researching about Excel, when I was researching about what should I present to you guys, these are things that really stood out to me. So Tatsuo and Bruce have shown us what we can achieve in Excel. The guy that spreadsheet one, I'm pretty sure most of us might have heard or came across this game 2048, where the aim is to build, is to reach the 2048 number by using multiples of two or to the power of exponent of two. They created this game in Excel, purely in Excel. No software, no coding, nothing, just Excel. That's just, that's just uh, on a different level for me. Now coming to the heavy lifting part that Emily has talked about uh, in the introduction. Yes, we can use these amazing functionality in Excel to sort through enormous amount of data. And that's why it's, it's the workhorse. We actually call it the workhorse of the financial system because that's what it does. So many models, so many calculations, so many formulas, so many organizations use Excel day in, day out to deliver their projects, to deliver value to their clients by using Excel and the power that it brings with it. So yes, so for, for those of you who said, yes, we can sort through enormous amount of data in Excel, you were right. And for, the, for those of you who said not, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see some some basic applications of Excel and we'll probably try to, we'll probably try to change your answer from no to yes during the course of the during the course of the session so let's see how successful or how unsuccessful we are in that uh, create simulations and visual reports i for one use excel uh, as a dashboard if if i have to deliver some sort of a presentation if i have to deliver some sort of a um, a, a visualization well there are a lot of moving parts for me the best tool to go with is excel a lot of client deliverables that i have done have been in excel and that, that I, again explains the heavy lifting part that Excel does for us. I, so yes, we can create simulations and visual reports in Excel. And that's, that's, I would say, classifies as one of the advanced usage of Excel, but everyone who's an advanced user in Excel started someday as a basic and a beginner user. I, for one, started using Excel at a point of time when I thought, let me just use Excel to, to just do some new basic mathematical calculations. And then I, I started, I started getting used to it and I eventually started enjoying it. So here I am. Conditional formatting is one thing as well, which you can do in Excel in terms of uh, how you want the data to be seen. So in this particular picture, I'm not, uh, not, I'm not sure if that's really legible or not, but what they have done is they've laid out the total fatalities and the alcohol factor you know, uh, behind those fatalities and spread that across different, different dates uh, in, in, in a month. You can highlight them so that it really strikes you that you have a high alcohol fatality in in accidents in the first half in in the first uh, in the first few days or so on and so forth. So it's very useful if you have to identify patterns within your data. It's an excellent, amazing tool to use a lot of data to do a lot of number crunching. It's very important to understand that you need to find out patterns as well. So I think I think the answer to that the initial slide that we put ahead was. Yes, you can do all of these six things in Excel and some people have actually shown us the limits of Excel as well, which, which is just amazing for me. So let's, um, uh, this is what we will be covering in this course. We'll be talking through the building of a spreadsheet, comments and notes in Excel, formulas. We'll be talking through some of the basic formatting and then we'll eventually be deep, uh, diving into the graphs and the charts and how to create that in Excel. Uh, I think that was enough from my side. I'll allow Emily to uh, take over now uh, and explain about Sheets and uh, Excel. So I think the, the first thing to highlight is um, if, if you could pop in the chat function. I, I know we sent out a survey in advance. I don't think we got very many responses. So if at any point, um, now that we're going through, this is how to do things in Excel. 
if we're talking too fast, if we're saying something that doesn't make sense, or if there's you have a, a particular question that you'd like us to answer as we go along, if you pop it in the chat, I can see the chat as we're going along. So if it's in a bit that I'm presenting, I'll make sure I say it. If it's in a bit Ashish is presenting, I'll interrupt him and, and, and let him know. Because what that will mean is that anyone who does watch this on the recording will get to learn that, that extra bit of information that you think is useful. So I think the first thing we wanted to, to just chat through was what, what, is, what does an Excel spreadsheet look like? And, and hopefully everyone will have, will have seen an Excel spreadsheet before, but if not, um, Ashish, we've got one open, haven't we? Um, that hopefully might look familiar. This is one that we've we've been provided with, so um, hopefully it will 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 look familiar to people. But you know, in sort of quickly, we'll just run through some of the different parts of of a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So along the bottom at the at the bottom left, we've got some sheets. And each of them is, 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 is labeled a tab and they will you can have them containing different information, the same information, templates, copies of information. And those are called sheets, which is quite handy because they are labeled as sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. And we'll come on to the fact that you can actually rename them in a second. The, the individual little squares, so at the moment we've got one highlighted in February, is called a cell. So we, we will use that terminology. So that is a cell, that's where you put your data and your information in. And then the, the other uh, term that we'll probably use quite a lot is the ribbon. And the ribbon is that bit along the top where there's all the different, uh, different functions and things you can do in Excel. So when we click on buttons in there, we'll refer to that as being in the ribbon. Okay, so the first thing we wanted to do was just some basic sheet maintenance or basic Excel maintenance. So looking at how to add a sheet, delete a sheet, rename it, et cetera, et cetera. So starting with adding a sheet, there's a couple of ways you can do it. The first one and the easiest one is next to the sheets, there's a little plus button in a, in a circle. We click that, we get an extra sheet. And that extra sheet will always insert just to the right of the sheet you're currently on. So if you don't want it there, if you wanted it, say after sheet two, you click and hold and you can just drag it and drop it after sheet two. So that's that hopefully is fairly simple. It just allows you to organize your, your, your information. If we wanted to rename a sheet, so let's rename sheet one Ashish. If we can, we right click, we can either double click with the left part of our mouse, which will then highlight and select the sheet and we can call it something. So let's call it, let's literally call it something. That's probably a, a good, good thing to call it. Alternatively, if, if that's not the easiest way, if you right click on your mouse, you can go to rename and you can call the sheet something else. Or you can actually just add additional text to it. Okay, so that's adding a sheet. If we did now decide, so we've added a sheet, we've renamed one, the next thing we want to do is maybe remove a sheet. So let's say sheet two, we don't need it anymore. So we right click on there and there's a big button that says delete. That's the one we click, nice and simple. And then it will, Microsoft Excel will tell you that if you delete the sheet, you won't be able to get it back. So we're totally comfortable. We're gonna delete it, we click delete. If you don't want to delete the sheet, when it tells you that you click cancel, it won't delete the sheet. So that, that is the, the sort of the very basics of, of um, what we see. And at, at this point, yeah, I, I can see there's some comments about whether you can cannot have a go yourself. If, if we pause for maybe three minutes, if people want to have a quick, quick go, minimize Zoom and, and have a quick go at things. Would anyone like to do that? I'm not sure. Uh, but in, in which case, we we can we can carry on a bit, and and ho hopefully we'll will people will have a, a chance an opportunity to do that 
again. So I think, Ashish, that's everything on um, on that slide, isn't it? Now we will be sending, we will share these slides with people after the call. So you'll have all this information about the different ways you can do things. And what we've also done is included alternative ways to do some of the, the things that we're showing you. We're showing you the simplest possible way to do it. But we've also included a note as to how to actually do that as a, as a different way, because some people prefer different ways of doing things. So that's that's dealing with sheets. We've we've oh we've also done move and copy. We did that very quickly, didn't we? But it is worth showing you the other way to move and copy. So if we can go back to this tab, if we want to move sheet three to after sheet four, one way, as I said before, was to click and hold and then drag it. The other would be to right click on the on sheet three and go to move or copy. And if we click that, you'll see that you can move or copy within the same book and you can move it to the end, move it to the, um, another tab, but you can also move it to a new book. So if we click that little drop down, we can create a, a new book with just that in. And we can use a create a copy, which means that we leave a copy in our current spreadsheet and we put a copy in our new spreadsheet that we have the same sheet for. Now, obviously that's going to be very difficult for us to approve because sheet four is blank. Um, so let's just try that again, Ashish, using the, the, the one with the information in. So if we right click, we're going to create a copy in a new workbook. And what you'll see is when we, when we do that, we get a new spreadsheet called book one. Oh, sorry, book two, oh, because we've already done this once. So we get a new tab uh, spreadsheet called book two with a tab called something else with all the information and the, the template that we were using in, book, in our previous spreadsheet. And because we've done it as a copy, it's still there as well. Okay, so that's some basic spreadsheet maintenance. Is everyone comfortable if, with, with what we've gone through so far? Is there anything anyone would like me to go over again? If you just pop it in the chat function. Um, and then what we'll do is if everyone's, once everyone's happy, we can move on. Yep, sure, Christine, if you'd like to, to have a little, little try. Uh, Ashish, I think there's some difficulty in, um, while you're screen sharing, in people being able to test it in their own Excel. So if you could just unshare your screen for a moment, just to allow everyone the opportunity to have a quick, have a quick go. Is that okay now? Yeah. Yes, thank you. I had a little go. All good. That's a, it's always it's always good when the tech works. I was feeling very I was feeling a bit nervous before this, and I thought I'm not in charge of the tech today. If the tech goes wrong, it's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is my usual thing, which is if something goes wrong, it's my fault. <laughs> no, no, you're all good. We're all good. Excellent. Is everyone everyone happy to for Ashish to start sharing his screen again? Uh, Sorry, Emily, uh, I've just lost it a little bit between create a new sheet and create a new book. Um, sorry. Just create a new sheet. So that's where you put an extra tab along the bottom. So that's the one with the little uh, circle with the cross, the plus sign in it. Yes, yes. That's easy. If you're wanting to move that if you can into a new book, if you right click on it, there's a button that says move or copy. If you, there's then uh, at the very top of that section, there's a little drop down menu that allows you to either move it within the current book, which is where it'll have the current name, or you'll have an option that's in brackets and it'll say new book. And that's how you move it to a new book. So you select new book, you click the create a copy, and then you'd end up with the same tab in both your old book and your new book. Thank you. So within, within one book, you have multiple sheets. Yeah, but, yeah, exactly. a number of books, each which with multiple sheets in them. Okay, thank you. No worries. 
Okay, I think we're probably good to, to start moving on then, Ashish, if, if, we, if we can. Is, are, are you happy, Christine, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's fine, thank you. Amazing. In that case, uh, let's move on to the next section, which is, uh, I think I'm supposed to talk about it. All right, amazing. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Um, now, the next section is all about uh, commenting and um, I'll just put it on the screen for a minute and then shift to Excel. So it's about using the uh, cell comment functionality and the cell note functionality in Excel. I'll talk through some of the reasons why we would use it and how we would use it basically. Uh, it's, it's an amazing functionality. I'll, um, I'll, come to the, I'll come to the specifics when I open the Excel book. So let's say if I am the staff and I'm working on this Excel sheet, where let's say if I if inputted some figure for the month of February, I input 365 pounds, is something I received as donations. And I'm not too sure about it. I mean, or, or I'm not too sure if it's 365, it's 375, or maybe zero as well. And I want my line manager or someone senior to me to actually review this sheet. And when they review the sheet, they should actually uh, they should actually address my question that I have. So in that case, one thing that I can do is I can add a new note to it, which is basically I say, hi, can you please confirm this figure while reviewing? My sheet. And it stands out as a red, as, as a red arrow at the top of at the um, at the top right corner of the cell. So this is this being a cell, it stands out on the top right corner of the cell. And if you hover over the cell, it'll actually show you the note or the comment that I had written in the cell. Ashish, so, would you just be able to zoom in a wee bit? I think it's just a tiny bit small. Uh, yes. Yeah. Agreed. Thank agreed. You. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. Is that okay now? I mean, just I, I've just zoomed in for, for the moment. So it appears as if um, you have the arrow, the, the top part of the arrow on the top, uh, bottom top, uh, sorry, on the top right corner of the cell. And this actually signifies that someone has in, inputted a note or comment in that cell. And it's usually used as a review mechanism. So whenever someone else goes in the sheet, if there's something that you want to divert their attention to, or is there something that you want to look into a cell and then review it and then close it off, you would add a note to that cell. And it's, it's very simple, I'll, I'll repeat it again. You just right click on the cell, you add a new note. That is it, It's and you just type it. Because I am logged into my official Microsoft account, my name appears as well, so it can tell them that Ashish Pandey wrote this note, but if it doesn't appear in your system, because probably you might not have logged in, it might show some, it might read a user or your actual username. You can, you can feel free to type it, say, staff, can you please confirm this? It's, it's, a, very, it's a very handy, it's a very handy tool, I would say, uh, and, or a feature given by Excel, um, mostly used for review, or even in cases where, um, I have inputted some value into it, but I'm, I want the reader of the cell or I want the reader of the sheet to know where I got the data from. So it's, it's very useful in those cases as well to actually use as to be used as a reference to reference some value. Let's say have I got some something from a report that I was reading and I've inputted a number in the cell. I want to say 767, sorry, 676. And if I add a new note and I say, I got this data from a book I was reading. And if I share this information with you, if I share this document with you, it will still be there. And when you hover over the cell, you can, re you can see that where I got this data from and I want you to review the cell. I'm not too sure about the contents of the cell. So it's, it's, it's how you use notes. And deleting a note is as simple as inserting a note. You would just click on the delete, or you just click right click on the cell that has a note attached to it. And you would write, 
you just click on the delete note uh, option. You can even edit a note once it's been written. It's not, it's not permanent there. You can edit it definitely. You right click on this one and you can edit it. But also from a website. Nice. Now, the other thing I can do is I can show and or hide all the notes. If I right click on this one, if, the, if for some reason the hover function does not actually show you the notes, the easy way to see the note is to click on, right click on the cell and click on the show or hide note functionality. In some, uh, in some installations of Microsoft Excel, depending on which version you're using, you might see that you have, instead of the new note functionality, you have a comment functionality. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's nothing different. It's just how Excel, no. uh, it's just how Microsoft uh, tries to revisit certain concepts and rename it. It's basically a name change rather than a functionality change. There's a, there's a very subtle difference between, between uh, a comment and a note, but uh, I, I don't think the, the, the difference is appreciable enough at this point of time to actually make a tangible difference. So either, I mean, if you, if you're, if you, if the version of Microsoft Excel that you're using gives you an option to add a note and a comment, both feel free to choose either of them. If it gives you comment, don't, don't be, uh, don't be bothered about the fact that we taught, we discussed notes and yours one shows comments. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. Don't, don't worry about it. Uh, it's, it's more about the functionality and how you use these notes and what you do from these notes that really matters for this um, in, in the actual usage of Excel. So now that I've actually demonstrated this, I'm just gonna delete all these notes. You can bulk, bulk delete the notes as well. You don't need to click right click on each note and then delete it. You can select all the cells that have notes on them and you can just right click one and delete notes. So it's simple as that, but I find the notes functionality super, super helpful because as a senior analyst in the team, when my work is being reviewed by my directors or my senior managers, I want them, I want them to review certain as aspects of the sheet more stringently compared to the other ones. Or I want their attention to be diverted to a certain, certain, certain data points that I've inputted because I might not be sure of them or I might want uh, a fresh pair of eyes to look at those those values. So it's re really, really helpful. Now, while I was talking about it, there's one thing that I also realized. Sometimes, and we'll, we'll be covering a bit of this in the, in the further sections. Let's say, I'm, I'm not sure how many of you know about formulas in Excel, but Excel, in order to do the heavy lifting, it employs a lot of techniques. So let's say I write a formula in this cell, but my manager does not know what this formula does. So I can actually use the notes functionality to actually explain what the cell is doing or where this data in the cell is coming from. So I can say, this value is the sum of all income sub components. And when they see this number and this, this, they see the formula that is in the cell, sum, we'll, we'll talk about this later on. Um, in the session, they know that this value is the sum of all this income subcomponents, which is your grants, your donations, your fees, your bank interest, and your salary. So that's it's, 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 it. Can be used for a lot of a lot of things. These are the top three reasons why I personally use notes or comment in Excel. Uh, if you have if if you use notes or comments functionality in Excel quite frequently please feel free to um, type the reason why you use that in the chat window. And we'll be really interested to know some, some functionalities or some reasons to use notes, which we probably don't use in our day to day life. So it's, it's, I would say it's more of a, um, more of a learning for us as well. And if, if you use if you use the notes or a common functionality for something else. Uh, I'm gonna pause here for a minute. And uh, Emily, I'm gonna bank upon you to monitor the chat section so that you can actually tell me if someone has burning questions questions on notes or uh, comments. Does anyone want to have a quick go? Do we want to, to do an unshare and so people can have a quick go with that or uh, people want to go? Okay, so yeah, I think if we just unshare again for a couple of seconds, just to. 
so people can can have a go at, at, at adding those adding a comment in a cell even if as, as I usually use she was very very professional and actually explained things mine usually are things like my name is um on us on <laughs> as my practice comments on a cell so we'll give you a couple of seconds to, to have a go at that and then what we'll do is we'll talk about how to actually use excel to to do some maths and not real maths, just the simple stuff. The, the bits that people would do in their heads. Um, uh, yeah, Thomas, the, a lot of these functions can be, be used by using, a lot of things can be done on the right click. Right click is great. It, it gives you lots of different ways of, of doing things. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that should have been enough time for everyone to have a quick go. And Ashish, I think it's probably a good time for you to reshare your screen. Amazing, I'll do that now. Mm -hmm. I hope everyone is able to see my screen now. Uh, yeah. It's not come through just yet, there it goes. Amazing, okay. So I already hinted on uh, something which was sum and then certain values. Now I'm gonna talk more about, we're gonna dive deep into something which does a lot of the heavy lifting for Excel, which is the use of formulas. Formulas are something that we just use in Excel on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of when you get to the more intermediate or advanced or higher level of Excel knowledge or usage of Excel. You, you, you don't want to do a lot of stuff manually. You want to you want Excel to do a lot of the computational things because eventually that's why you use it. That's why you're using a computer for you. you want it to give you the results rather than you getting on your phone you on your calculator manual calculators and then typing and punching in numbers and give and putting the results you can do that you can do that but can you not view excel as a overly powerful calculator as well because eventually that's what it is you can type in numbers you can do a lot of calculation you can do a lot of mathematical steps you can do a lot of statistical operations into it you name it and it's there it's you have you have basically formulas categorized by types you can do trigonometry something that oh, i at least i dreaded back back in my gcse and a levels back equivalent back in india so dreaded trigonometry you can do a lot of financial solving which unfortunately i have to do <laughs> in in my current day to day job you can do a lot of simple stuff so i use i use excel in my personal life as my as a personal kind of a book where I, I document all my expenses or, 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 or create a budget, budget of, sort, of sorts and then see how much have I, have I been spending and how much I've been saving. So it's, it's for those small things as well. You can use Excel and obviously in your, in your workplace. So the functions, uh, these are some of the operations that you can do, some of the easier, some of the very sm simplest of the operations, uh, addition, a subtraction, a multiplication, and a division, the basic four. and uh, Actually, I think it's really much more useful if we just, rather than putting everything on the slide, if we just talk through certain things, because that's more hands-on. That's how I think. Um, okay. so, all right. Now, let's say I want to populate the income that I received in the month of January. So I'm gonna start populating some random numbers here. Might not be a true reflection of what you actually have, but for the sake of the session, let's say I type, I get 5,000 pounds as grant. I get 4,000 pounds as donations. We get a very small amount as fees and an even smaller amount as bank interest. And our century is somewhere around 50 pounds. So that comes up to be, the income for the month of January sums up to be 9,160. Now, how we arrive at number? There are three ways, basically. There are three easy ways, I would say. One, you use Excel as just your data book. You open the, you open the calculator app on your mobile phone and you add 4,000 plus 5,000 plus 100 plus 10 plus 50. And then you type in the number here manually, which is 9160. But, what if the downside of that using that step is 
what if someone says, no, the, the grants that we received in month of January is not 5,000, it's actually 6,000. What do we do then? I mean, the result, the sum is, the total is incorrect now. Someone says, the bank interest A looks wrong, it should be 100 pounds. Another, another blow to our total uh, income in, in the month of January. So to protect us from these data issues happening in an Excel sheet, what we do is we use formulas. Now, the other way before I switch to formulas would be I manually use the plus symbol to add all of them as we would have done uh, on our calculators. And I think it's probably just worth noting there, the way Ashish is doing that is he's just hovering over the cell and then left clicking. Um, and what, what those letter and number combinations are that, that go into the Excel formula is what's called a cell reference. So that's made up of the letter, which tells you which column number it is, and the row, which tells you which row it's in. It's a bit like chess, um, if anyone plays chess, where it, each, each cell has its own letter and number reference, depending on where it is. So that's... Um, that's what those numbers are coming up as. So I think it's probably just worth saying that. Yeah. Uh, to the way around, it's, uh, it's column oh, followed by a number. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So you have example, this the cell reference for this particular cell that I am going to highlight in the color red is E14 and the cell reference you can view on the top left corner of your screens. So this is, it says E14 here. And how we get to E14 is E is your column. In Excel, you have columns starting from A and going all the way up to, I think it's 256 columns or something like, something that, like that. And you have then 14, which is your row number. And we go, I think we have, 1 million, roughly 1 million rows in Excel, in the version of Excel that I am using. Uh, so that's how it is. The cell reference, as Emily rightly said, is your column number is a column followed by the row, row number. So that's E14 in this particular case. And what I basically did here to do the sum is I inputted all the cell references where I had my useful data. My useful data was the grants that I received in January, the donations that I received in January, fees, bank interest, and sundry that I had received in January. These, this is, these five values are the useful data for me. So I manually inputted the references to all of them. As because as opposed to the manual method of adding and just typing in a number, we did notice that if there was a change in a value, the sum would not change because you're not referencing the value directly to, to the cell. In this case, because we have referenced the cell to the final total, let's say the grants decrease from 6,000 to 4,000. Shouldn't, it shouldn't be decreasing in any month. It should always be going up. But let's say if we had a particularly uh, not so great month, the grants have decreased, then our total, unfortunately, the total income for that month would come up to be 8,250. And that's because instead of manually inputting a number in the cell, you've used the power of Excel. And e an easier method to do this would be, this, what I've done currently is also fine. I've used these five cells. You can see them highlighted. One, two, three, four, five, to come up with this final sum. The other way around could be, I just use this. So now I'll, I'll, I'll first type the formula and then I'll explain what, I'm, what am I actually doing in this formula. Now, to start a formula in Excel, to tell Excel that what you are going to type now is a formula and not just a text, you need to start with the equal to symbol. So if you have to start a formula, it has to start with the equal to symbol. And as soon as you type equal to symbol, you are telling Excel that whatever I'm going to type now from now onward, Treat, treat that as a formula rather than as a text because let me show you the other way around. So if I'm just gonna delete this for now, if I just do a sum, 
and click enter, it's still going to give you the same result because eventually what this is doing is I've inputted as equal to sign, telling Excel that I'm going to input a sum now. I've inputted sum, which is what I'm going to do. It's a summation operation. Then I select the range of cells which in which I have my useful data over which I, you want to perform the operation. So that's C10 to C14, it's these ones. This colon is telling me the range. I'm not sure if you can see the. Ashish, would you be able to zoom in a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to do that now. I'm not sure if that I can zoom into the formula bar though. Sorry. You won't be able to zoom into the formula bar. Mm. Um, no. Just zoom out a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, I think you can see it. Now you can see it. Yeah. So we had equal to, we had sum, which actually tells, which is the mathematical operation that Excel provides to sum certain values. Then you open the round brackets. Then you type the first cell reference that you had. And you ex basically, I didn't type any of this. I didn't type any of this. I basically just typed the round brackets, the opening and the closing of the round brackets. And I selected the cells in this, in this linear fashion, which basically and, inputted, yeah, C10 to C14. And, and in selecting those cells, that's by holding down the left-hand key on your mouse. So you click on the first one, and while still holding down the left key, you just drag your mouse down until you've got all the cells that you want to include. Mm. Thank you, Emily. So yeah, so that's how we did it. Uh, and then we got the sum, which is 8,250 pounds. So we had this as it, as our income in the month of January, which is just great, I would say. Now, so these are the three ways. We, we did discuss the three ways. One is obviously the hard way. You manually input certain something into it. You sum it up in, on your calculator or, or just manually on, on a piece of paper and type the value. Downside of this, you lose the flexibility if the numbers change. You'll have to redo those calculations. The other way around is you spell everything out as you want Excel to do it. So you just say this plus this plus this plus this plus this, and it'll give you the number. It'll give you the number. It will, but it's the hard way. Let's say if we had if we had to sum all the numbers from here to here, you'll have to manually select all of them and then say, give me a sum of all these, all these different parameters or all these different sub sub costs. Easier way, you type, you use the formula. So that's where the formula does the bulk of the heavy lifting for you. And that's how it is. That's, and it's things like that, which make Excel such a powerful, such an immensely powerful tool to be used in your day-to-day -day operations. Uh, I know for some, uh, for some of you who are not that or not that you don't use Excel in their day-to-day -day lives or in their day-to-day -day operations. This was probably a lot to capture. There was, we did talk about a lot of things, but we will be sharing the slide deck with you so that we, when you do it on your own, on your own machines, you can actually do and replicate these steps um, as you've discussed here. Okay, I think the, the next slide that we've got has another function that does very much the same thing. And we've, we've got what the difference is between those two. But in order to keep moving, I think we'll, we'll do a couple of minutes for people to have a, a quick go. So if Ashish, you stop sharing your screen for a couple of minutes, just for people to have a go with so, with the different types of adding up. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll go on to move on to making a spreadsheet look pretty, which is, all, which is I think everyone agrees, is the most important part of, of, of all of this, making it look nice. So we'll just give you two, uh, and two minutes and then we'll we'll move on to that next bit.
would anyone like a little bit further time or, sh or should we should we do a little bit of making things pretty and people can have a bit more of a go after the call Is that all right cool if, if you want to start sharing again ashish and we'll we'll do a little bit of some of the some of the stuff that we can do to make our excel spreadsheet look uh, look nice um so the the first thing we, we we've got and and ashish has shown this a few times is about changing the color number format and etc so we just jump back to the excel spreadsheet we might as well just just get get started on that so first thing we want to do is we want to color that cell that, that ashish is in let's go with orange because i like orange today so up on that top on the ribbon we've got a button in the section called font which sort of has like a little it, it's it's basically a paint pot tipped over you can't see that on the screen and we can't make it bigger but it is it's a paint pot with some little paint falling out and if we click on that or click on the little um, drop down arrow it will give you a load of colors that you can use to make the color in your cell and if you just select one of those let's go with orange an orangey color yep yeah, that'll do and we click on that and it makes our cell orange so that's nice and simple for me i quite like traffic light systems so i use a lot of red amber and green to highlight cells that i've either I, what i tend to do is if i if i'm copying a spreadsheet and doing something new with it i'll highlight all the cells in red and when I've sort of, I'm most of the way there to being happy that the number in there is right, I'll take, turn it to amber. And when I'm 100% certain that I've got the right number, I turn it to green. When my entire spreadsheet is green, I go, ha ha, I've done it. It's all green. It's brilliant. So what that does is it means that we can keep track of things. Um, the other thing I'll do is I will, if I'm using a spreadsheet from one month to the next, what I might do is say in January, fill all my numbers in and I highlight them when I've changed them all into yellow and then when I come and fill the spreadsheet and in February I change all the numbers and when I change them I change the colour so I can see which ones are January numbers because they'll be in yellow and I, I know which numbers are February numbers because they're in orange and then my March numbers might be green and so forth and so on so it's just a good another good way of keeping track of where your data's come from and what you've updated and also makes your spreadsheet look pretty. Now, the other thing you can do is actually format numbers. So you can actually make your numbers look different. Now, at the moment, what we've got there is, is just numbers in, the, in their very simplest form. Now, if we highlight those numbers and we press that little, what, what is a comma up the top, what that will do is that will put us commas at every thousands place and will give us two decimal places. So if we click that, it suddenly looks like money. And it's quite a good way because it lines everything up nice and neat and you can then see what numbers are thousands and what numbers are hundreds. It's especially useful if you've got some numbers that have pens and some that don't. Because if you have a, a scenario, if you just undo that for a second Ashish, and, and just on the, on let's say on donations, yeah. uh, you, you need to change it to general rather than number. That's the one on donations. Just add thirty-two pence to to that donation. Now, what you'll see is we've now got two numbers that are very similar that sit all askew. So our grants are four thousand pounds, so they're in the thousands, and our donations are four thousand pounds. But the four looks just so much. It just looks so much bigger. But if we put that comma back in on all of the, those numbers. The fours will line up again and we'll be able to see at a glance those are the biggest numbers because sometimes when you have decimal points in some numbers and not in others you can't just look at it and go yeah there's my biggest number or at least those are my biggest numbers uh sorry christine i missed which, what did we click on for which which thing <laughs> sorry uh, sorry it's been you've answered it now because you've gone over it again thank you okay cool so that's the comma there's also a percentage you'll see uh, next to the comma so we could change all them to percentages don't know why we would but let's say we do let's let's do that 
and again it changes it to a percentage now percentages are stored in excel as decimal points so as, as a proportion of one so yep if we do that if we do 0.5 and we turn it into a percentage it comes up as 50 percent So always stored as a proportion of one. Um, so when you change something from a normal number to a percentage, it will basically do the times by a hundred bit for you and just present it nice and tidy. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of different functionality. And one of the things that Ashish will showed there is those are just the shortcuts for the most common functions, but there is a little drop down um, where you've got some even more options. And then if, if you're not happy with those options, <laughs> which includes dates, you're not happy with those options and you want to look at even more than that, you can click more number formats and there are hundreds and thousands of different combinations. You can even design your own, um, which I occasionally do because I like numbers that color code themselves. But there are, as I say, absolutely hundreds and you can hand write them if you really want to. But I'm not gonna go into that because it's too complicated and I can't remember how to do it. Um, so <laughs> that's, that's dealing with, um, with the different formats. Sometimes what you'll get is you'll get a um, cell that's got a lot of information and if it's written information, it might not all appear in the cell. So Ashish, can you just make column A? small enough that equipment and maintenance is um, doesn't all appear. That's the one. Right. Now, if we just put a number in, in column C, just on our expenditure on equipment and maintenance, so 100 quid, not bothered what it is, that's, that's fine. Now, what happens is in, in this scenario, what we've got is we've got 100 pounds of equipment and maintenance, but it only appears as equipment and math. Now, what we can do is we can either resize that cell, and the way we do that is the way she's just showed us, where we highlight the entire the top of the cell and we just drag it till it's wide enough. So that's option one. And then we can make it so it all fits. Option two is we double click, we, we hover over that, that bit of the cell to make it bigger again, and we double click, and that will auto expand the cell. But the one that I really want to show you is something called wrap text. And there's a big button that says wrap text on it. And if we click that, what it will do is it will make that cell multiple lines. And instead of, it will say, you know what, instead of trying to make it all appear in one long line, just make, make the text fit in the cell and just make the cell bigger underneath. Um, and it's quite a good way of presenting things when, when, you're, uh, when you're doing something like that. What you'll notice is that the number then appears in the bottom of the cell and that will always happen. Microsoft Excel always defaults to information being held at the bottom of the cell, not the top. Now, if you want to move it to the top, just slightly higher up, Ashish, the, the row above. So along in this alignment section, you can center, so you can do top, middle and bottom. So we've got top, middle and bottom, and then you've got left, middle and right. So you can actually change how things line up in cells. So that's how you deal with that. The, the other thing you might want to do is merge a cell. So that's where you've got effectively two cells that you want to make into one cell. So let's say we, uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. Let's say our cleaning and communications are provided by the same person. So we only get one invoice for that but we want to still have the two lines. What we're gonna do is in column C, we're gonna highlight cells C18 and C19 by clicking and holding the, the, the left key while we, we highlight it. And then directly under the big wrap text button, there's a big button saying merge and send. So we're gonna click that. And what that does is that converts two cells into one cell, and then we can put information in there. So let's say it was 200 pounds. Again, it, because it defaults, it will default to sitting at the bottom of the cell, but we can move that to the middle or the top. So that, that's a basic overview of some of the, the very simple formatting. 
and I, I noticed that uh, Hasifan, you've you've said that your husband said it couldn't be done. Well, it can, and you can tell him now and tell him he's wrong. Um, so that's some very basic functioning uh, functionality in, make, in terms of making uh, color coding and, and things like that. You can also do some conditional formatting where you format things to to highlight in certain conditions. We've got some guidance on that in the in the in the, the PowerPoint. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. But what Ashish is showing you is there's some color scales, so where you highlight the biggest cells and the smallest cells, and things are highlighted in different ways. And we've also got a top and bottom rules where you can highlight the top ten transactions or, or the bottom 10 or the top 10 percent but when you click those it will ask you how many cells you want to highlight so it says top 10 but if you want top 20 you click top 10 and then change the 10 to 20 and then it does it it's great no no need to do all that manual color coding now i'm just a bit conscious that we said we'd only do an hour and we've we've kind of done that does anyone want to, us to, con well, there was one more section that we were going to do. Do people want to continue or do you just want to read what we put in the, um, in the PowerPoint? Just give people a chance to, okay. Well, we've got at least two people willing to continue. So we, we, we will continue on. I think it's it's back over to you there, Ashish. Amazing, thank you, thank you, Emily. Wonderfully explained, and I think uh, uh, formatting is such an important thing because you can create an Excel sheet as nicely as possible. You can you can do wonderful things with it, and eventually, someone someone else who is probably senior to you, your line manager, will definitely come in and is like, "This doesn't really look nice," or "Why have you not highlighted things?" Because eventually, when someone senior looks this, at the cells, or when when you're actually presenting something to someone, you want the important bits to stand out. So, and as Emily said, you can make them stand out through multiple things, through multiple mechanisms in Excel. So you can either, either use conditional formatting to say which ones are the biggest numbers, which one are the smallest ones. So let's say you want to highlight which ones are the biggest, which ones, which, which income components have more than 4,000 pounds in them. You can easily do that. And as Emily said, amazing, amazing functionality that Excel provides to, do, to format your sheets in an amazing manner. And I, I've, seen, I've seen some amazing visualizations that have been created in Excel using formatting. I've seen some really, really crappy sheets as well, where you don't really understand what's going on. It's just all very um, chaotic, which, which I don't think anyone wants, but sometimes if you don't use X, the power of Excel, it becomes chaotic. So um, I'm gonna, Continue on with the next section. So having discussed formatting, so um, Emily discussed all about the formatting. It's there on the slides. You can chat. You can you can have a look at it. You want spare time. The only pending section that we have now is charts. I think it's going to take another ten minutes for us to continue, uh, to complete that. And apologies for um, extending by ten minutes. But charts, I think, is one of the most more important topics that I wanted to discuss with you because, as they say, a picture speaks thousand words. I think a chart can basically help you sum summarize or simplify information in a pictorial ma manner, which is really important because these numbers might mean a lot of things to a lot of people, but for some, some of us, we don't want to go through, through these numbers. We really don't want to. I'll, I'll give you an example quick here. So basically in Excel, we have 11 major chart types and we have variations of different chart types as well. Some of the most useful chart types that I personally use are the line chart, which basically shows the trend or the variation in, in certain things over a period of time or across different categories. So here, what we have is, is, is I, can, I can say it's probably, probably the number of people, let's say, who were, who were there in an organization and how that has varied between 2010 and 2011. It's, it tells you so much. It tells you so much that in 2010, towards the end of the year, the number of people were greater than the number of people in the starting in, in the middle of the year. And you had jump 
you had a jump in hiring or you had a jump in recruitment in May, and then you had another jump in recruitment in October. And conversely for 2011, you started with good good number of people, but eventually towards the end of the year, something organization went to change. We had um, uh, we had people leaving the firm, and eventually you you ended with a, up with a, a dip in October. It's, it's, it's things like that. When you look at a chart, you can derive certain certain useful information. Things like a pie chart. A pie chart is great at showing you what person what proportion of pie is allocated to a certain attribute or a certain parameter. In this case. It could this pie chart could be very well talking about let's say the sales figure, but if I am if I am presenting to director, he, I think the first thing he probably wants to understand is which of my regions are performing the best. Looking at this pie chart, I can say yes, America has basically contributed fifty percent, over fifty percent of our total sales volume. Who, who is contributing the least? Asia Pacific and then EMEA. So pie chart, line chart. Both pow very powerful tools. Column charts. Column charts, I would say, are a variation of a line chart where each point, what you saw was joined through a line, is instead represented as, as columns. You can either have those columns as vertical columns. So this is a vertical column chart, or you can have a horizontal column chart where you would basically have flipped the axis. So what I say axis, I mean this. This is your y axis. And this is your x axis. In a horizontal column chart, you would have your data on the y axis. And in a, in, a, in a vertical column chart, your columns would be standing vertically. That's how we have. So this is a vertical column chart that I'm showing now. Clustered column chart is not massively different from a column chart, it's just a different variation of a column chart, which is very widely used because you want to compare the revenue in thousands across the year for different regions. So you want, a, so when I say a clustered column chart, it encompasses a lot of information that we have probably seen in other charts. So this chart, it shows the variation in revenue, 2002, three, four, and five, for each of those three regions. It's giving you so much more information than just a column chart or just a pie chart or just a line chart. And that's when it that that's where the beauty of Excel lies in and the uses of chart. You can use a chart to convey to, to create a picture, uh, to create a visualization which can basically represent what all the numbers are there uh, behind that Excel sheet. So now I'll try and create some some small charts in Excel using this January and the income uh, income subcategory data that I have here. Let me, before I do that, let me change some values. Now, I'm gonna say that we have 5,000 as grants. We, has, we had 1,000 as donations. We had 1,000 pounds as fees as well. We had a bank interest. We didn't have any bank interest. Or let's say, let's say we had a 500 as bank interest and we had 100 as sundry. Now, if someone asks me, for the month of January, can you tell me what percentage of the total income was the grant? Or can you represent all of these subcategories, sub-income categories in their percentage format? In a just, chart? Be just before oh. you go on, um, mm -hmm. in order to highlight those two columns, what Ashish has done is held down the, highlighted the first one and then held down the control key while he highlights the second one. And what that allows you to do is select a range that isn't next to each other. That's what the control key allows you to do. Select two slightly separate ranges. Thank you, Emily. It's, it's some like small things like these that I just forget when I'm doing it because it just gets so ingrained in you. And I'm pretty sure uh, when you guys start mastering Excel on your own as well, you'll start just you start mastering it in such a fashion it gets ingrained in you. It's like a muscle memory to you. So. As Emily rightly said, you select these and you press the, you keep pressing the control key and then you select these as well. And now you can leave the control key because you've selected what you wanted. Now we go to the ribbon and ribbon is the stop, the stop bar where you have multiple options that Excel is giving you, home, insert, draw. We're gonna go into insert because we have to insert. It's very intuitive, I would say. Insert, you would have, let's say if you wanted to insert something into it, you would have to go to the insert. 
if it was about formulas that you wanted to know about, and here, here it is that I was talking about uh, the math and trigonometric, all the all the sine and the cos and the tans and everything coming back together now. Sorry, uh, I'll, I'll probably have to stop looking at that uh, at that um, ribbon. Uh, we go into this chart section. So you see, I, I, unfortunately, it's not possible for me to zoom into it because that's how it is. Uh, but you see here, it says a chart section in the insert ribbon. I select the pie chart and you get a different options of pie chart as well. So Excel gives you options. It's always giving you options. What kind of, what kind of a pie chart do you want to use? A 2D, a 3D pie chart, a donut. I, I, I'll give you a tip right there. Don't, I, I would refrain from using a 3D pie chart in all circumstances because the 3D view doesn't give you any additional information. I need a simple 2D pie chart here. I'll repeat the steps for those of you who are probably following it along. Selected these ones, pressed down the control key, selected these cells, went to the insert ribbon, clicked on it, came to the chart section, selected the pie chart. Now, it tells me, I, I mean, I can, I can literally see, even if I'm not looking at the numbers, even if the numbers are not in front of me, I can literally see the grants are a major, major portion of my total income in the month of January. But let's say if I want to actually see what percentage of my total income in the month of January is from grants, I do a right click on this. Sorry. I you can do, click on this one, you can add data labels, basically, and then you right click on this and then you format the data labels. Oops, should appear now. You select, you remove, you don't want to see the values. You want, you're more interested in seeing what percentage. You click on percentage. So here it is, 66%, roughly two third of my total income in the month of January was from grants. Donations were 13%. My fees was 13%. My bank interest was 7%. And my sundry was 1%. Now I'll give you a tip right there. Pie charts are most useful or most beneficial to the viewer when it has less segments into it. It's just like cutting a pizza in, in, in different slices. The more the number of slices you cut, you start losing interest in the pizza. It just, you get such a small pie, such, such, such a small slice of the pizza. It's virtually not fulfilling enough. So the same goes here. So instead of, because I only had five subcategories, it was still okay for me to actually visualize this in a pie chart. I would never, I would, I would refrain from actually plotting the expenses into a pie chart because I have 18 categories. So I'll have to create 18 slices of a pizza. So imagine your favorite pizza and imagine 18 slices of that pizza. Unfortunately, I don't want to imagine that. So I best, a rule of thumb, Stick to pie charts with less than five categories. You are able to communicate what you want. It makes the right impact as well because I can see the slice as opposed to even here, if you see one person, if I had multiple slices, which were one person, two person, three person, it's probably not the right, it's probably not the right chart type for me to use. And that's, that's, and as you, and I'm giving, obviously, because we've been using Excel for a long time, both I and Emily, uh, once you start using Excel as well, you start realizing those pitfalls of how, of why you want a certain type of chart, why you don't want a certain type of chart. Now, removing this, we've already discussed this. Let me again, represent the same, sorry, I should go back to this. I'm gonna represent the same information in a different medium, in, in a, sorry, in a different chart. Again, selecting these, pressing down the control key, selecting January, going to insert ribbon, Clicking on the column chart. These are columns. I want to insert a 2D column now. Here is what I see. So this actually tells me, the, the, that actually gives me a visual indication of where, where of, of the size of the grants, the size of donations, the size of fees. It's, I can easily see without actually looking at the numbers, even here or there, the donations are equal to fees it's roughly around half of what I'm getting as bank interest and grants are the highest 
is, is the biggest portion of the entire uh, income in the month of uh, January. I can I can visualize the same information in a different chart type. Now let me try. I've already selected the data, so let me try and create a line chart out of it. Yeah. Usually, line charts are used to show trends and variations in data, and not actually represent the data itself. So, while this is this is okay, I mean, I can still figure out a lot of information from this. I I I personally would have preferred the two D line two D column in here because. I want to know, I don't want to see the trend here. It's not, I don't want, it's not a trend or the variation I'm interested in. I'm actually interested in the actual, actual category or the attribute itself. So in summary, we've discussed the charts and as you start using charts as a powerful way to communicate your data to your manager, because they don't have the amount of time to go through your entire Excel spreadsheet. They only want the relevant information. I think you'll start developing an appreciation of Excel uh, how charts and how you actually want to visualize uh, information. It's a, it's, a, it's an entirely different topic in its own right and its own self. Um, something we can probably cover in, in, in future stages, but for the, for the beginner level stuff, I think uh, if, you, if, you, if you familiarize yourself with your line charts, your pie charts and your column charts, I think you'll, you'll still be able to deliver what you want to, your, um, to either your customers, to either your managers or your organization. We've, we've just shown, um, I put in the slides, snippets from the, from the Excel, um, Excel file, showing the different steps, how we can create a chart. I think that was pretty much all about it. What we've also given as a kind of a giveaway uh, to you is what we feel is how you can, using these, using these tools, using these options, using these methods, you can learn to, you can learn Excel at your own pace because we know a lot of times, how I am pretty sure Emily would uh, attest to this. You learn Excel by doing things in Excel. It's it's not it's not a theory test that you have to pass. It's something that you 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 do over and over again, and you just you just perfect that to a point where you say, yes, I now know this for functionality. And to this day and age, I never say I, I I never I never would say that I cannot. This cannot be done in Excel. I'll probably use the better phrase, which is, I don't know how to do this in Excel because I've often been proven wrong. I don't know how to do this in Excel, but I, I, I'm not I doubting Excel. Sorry. I, I would agree. I, yeah. I think if anyone ever tells you that they're the utmost expert in Excel, don't believe them. They just haven't worked out what they don't know yet. So don't, you know, never, never feel like someone's talking about you and um, talking to you and saying, well, I'm an expert and you're doing it wrong. If it works, it's the right way to do it. There might be another way doesn't necessarily mean it's better, could be more complicated. Just do whatever feels right for you, um, I think. So I think there's a couple of extra slides we've included in there where there's some, some shortcuts that you can use on your keyboard to do various things. And we've put some, some terminology in there. But other than that, I think we've covered everything we intended to in slightly longer than we intended to. So hopefully um, everyone has got something from that. and. Um, when we've when this this has been all, all the thing has been shared, you can have a really good go yourselves. Thank you, thank you both. That was great. You've opened my eyes to uh, what you can do in Excel. Anyway, uh, I'll be having a go myself. <laughs> and yeah, I'm going to have a little go. Just say yeah, <laughs> definitely. <Babe. laughs> In the past, I've just used it um, instead of word for mostly for words, you know, for, and I've always been frightened of the numbers bit. Don't, the, don't be ever frightened of the numbers. The worst thing that can happen is it crashes and you have to do it again. That's absolutely the worst thing that can happen. And if that happens, well, you know, at least you had to go. You mm. don't have to do that particular thing again. You can do it slightly different or try something new, you know, there's, there's, there's nothing that can go majorly wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I've never, I've never had a clue how to format the cells or anything. So look forward to having a go at that. It's all, it, it does make life a lot easier. It's just so much more visual. And if you're a visual person, it just makes life so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I always think it's cleverer people that can do Excel. We won't let anyone know. 
Join us. <laughs> Join us. <laughs> Well, I think I've gained I've gained a bit of confidence to go and give it a try because um, our cash book for the charity is on um, Excel, and I've always been told just look at it, don't even save anything, but just don't click on anything. And I think I've always been scared. And then when I've had like registers, and now 